हेलो फ्रेंड्स व्हाट्स एप सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक्स दिस इज़ द सेवनटीन वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कंटिन्यू डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द कैपिटल अकाउंट कन्वर्टेबिलिटी इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन व्हाट इज़ द मीनिंग ऑफ कन्वर्टेबिलिटी एंड यू नो दैट वी हैव हंड्रेड परसेंट कन्वर्टेबिलिटी वेन इट कम्स टू करंट अकाउंट दैट इज़ फुल कन्वर्टेबिलिटी ओके बट इन कैपिटल अकाउंट वी हैव पार्शियल कन्वर्टेबिलिटी and uh, we have been discussing uh, okay why capital account convertibility is dangerous if we completely liberalize the capital account how it can be dangerous to the indian economy to the indian financial sector this we had discussed in the previous video now in this video we are going to look at the arguments in favor and against the full cse okay full capital account convertibility which is also known as capital flow liberalization okay so let us look at the two sides of the story okay so uh, let us first uh, look at you know arguments in favor so basically these arguments in favor mostly derive from the report of the tarapur committee of 1997 okay and so what this committee uh, said about uh, capital account liberalization and why we should liberalize our capital account completely so we will see so first of all the first argument that the tarapur committee had made in favor of capital account liberalization was that if we do capital account liberalization then fdi will be easier okay because there are no restriction on capital flows so it will attract more fdi it will attract more fpi foreign portfolio investments you know you know then indian borrowers will be able to take more external loans so external commercial borrowings can also increase because external commercial borrowings give cheaper loans to our indian companies or indian manufacturers businessmen so because the loans are cheaper outside the there will be business expansion okay more exports more imports will be there as we have seen you know different types of external commercial borrowing so it is not just the bank loans but it also includes the buyers credits and the sellers credit and also uh, you know so many different uh, things like uh, you know loans given by multilateral institution to the businesses uh, loans for exporting loans for importing so there are different types of loans so import export business will also increase which ultimately will lead to economic growth and job creation in the economy so all this uh, you know different benefits will be there if we liberalize our capital account then another uh, argument was that it will develop our financial market especially the bond markets because more foreigners will invest so you know the uh, the markets will deepen because the demand will increase more you know the price discovery will be better uh you know because demand and supply uh, will increase uh, in the market because of uh, liberalization of capital account so people will have more options to invest and uh, you know there will be no limit on investment so our financial markets will also develop however tarapur committee also mentioned that before we liberalize the capital account and to have all these benefits there should be some preconditions of the economy which should be met in the 3 years Okay, so Tarapur Committee of nineteen ninety seven gave a three year roadmap that by the year two thousand two thousand one we have to achieve these in order to liberalize our capital account. So although he was arguing in favor of capital account liberalization or full CSE, he said that we should meet these conditions first. So what were these conditions? The first condition was that our fiscal deficit should be in control. It should be less than or equal to three point five percent. then the second one was related to inflation he said that our inflation should be uh, you know for average of last 3 years should be 3 to 5% it should be within this band then interest rates should be decontrolled okay so decontrol of interest rates uh, previously you know during that time what used to happen our interest rates were administered interest rates meaning rbi used to dictate to the banks what will be the interest rates on you know different uh, savings or you know different types of loans so you know interest rate should be decontrolled that is what i uh, was saying when we studied the economic when we will study the economic reforms we will understand what exactly interest rate decontrol means so he said that interest rate should be decontrolled basically it should not be controlled by policy but it should be market driven okay that is what he was saying then 6 month import cover should be there import cover we already seen it means the number of months uh, that the rbi can uh, you know ensure that 
for six months uh, we can purchase our imports with the forex reserves that are available then our non-performing assets of the banking industry should be five percent okay it should be less than five percent of the total assets then our current account deficit should be in control okay our bank crr which is the cash reserve ratio should be three percent and rbi should uh, target the re real econo uh, real uh, effective exchange rate and there should be a five percent band okay so basically it was saying that we should have a managed floating around the rear index okay so we should target rear and we should have a five percent band uh, okay so for example if this is our rear target then there should be this five percent of band so exchange rate our rear should be allowed to fluctuate within this band and rbi should intervene only when it goes out of this band okay so these are the preconditions that it had mentioned okay so but however you can see that we have not uh, we did not reach all these preconditions we did not meet all this therefore we are not able to yet fully liberalize our capital account now what were the arguments against uh, the capital account liberalization it was as per the hr khan committee okay so hr khan said that all these benefits which are mentioned in the tarapur committee it is not necessary that it will happen if we liberalize capital account and it it, it was as per the imf study so imf had studied certain countries where you know there was a hundred percent capital account convertibility but they said that uh, necessarily this benefits did not accrue to this country so it is not necessary that if you liberalize your capital account fdi will increase or fpi will increase or you know business will expand economic growth will happen in fact reverse can happen as in the asian east asian countries like thailand malaysia and uh, you know so many different countries it led to asian financial crisis because of 100 percent capital uh, liberalization okay speculative or attacks on uh, currencies will happen then external commercial borrowing is a two say it is a two sided sword basically what happens ki ye do dhari talwar hoti hai because see on one hand you get a cheaper loan because interest rates are less but on the other hand there is a uh, you know foreign exchange okay foreign exchange rate risk so exchange rate risk is there which is known as currency mismatch basically see what happens if any indian company takes a loan in the form of external commercial borrowing so that company will have to repay its loan in the dollar form okay if it is taking in the dollar form but its income will be in rupees so for example if the rupee depreciates against dollar so obviously the company will have to pay more rupees to repay to re, to repay back its loan uh, you know which is taken in dollars so currency mismatch leads always leads to exchange rate risk okay then another argument was that pressure on currency during capital outflow okay so if there is capital outflows as we have seen there is a lot of pressure on currency and it can lead to cost push inflation due to expensive imports for example if our rupee depreciates a lot lot because of the capital outflows what will happen uh, we will not be able to purchase our crude oil okay uh, because our rupee has depreciated a lot and it will become very expensive now since the crude oil becomes expensive all other thing you know gets expensive like transportation gets expensive and you know inflation will increase and such an inflation is known as cost push inflation because uh, now the cost of commodities are increasing because of expensive imports then speculative attacks are very much possible speculative attacks we have already seen this and see once we liberalize once we open something it is very difficult to close it back okay if we roll out any policy of 100 percent liberalization it is very difficult to again close that account because you know global players are involved and so many investment takes place so going back becomes difficult if once we liberalize so we have to do it very 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 carefully so anytime a government takes any such policy policy decision it has to think 10 times okay because once you do it it is very difficult to reverse it so okay so piche jana bahut mushkil hota hai wapis so it becomes very difficult now what is the current status of capital account convertibility and steps taken to liberalize it okay what are the different steps we have taken see following the 1997 tarapur committee's recommendation india is moving towards full capital account convertibility we are slowly slowly moving towards it we are slowly slowly moving uh, you know reaching uh, meeting the preconditions okay currently we have a partial current account convertibility which is a 40 60 now what is this 40 60 see i'll explain it to here 40 60 means that 60 percent conversion can be done at exchange rate so rbi allows that okay uh, whatever is the market exchange rate 60 percent conversion will happen at that rate okay 
and uh, when when this policy was there rupee was overvalued at that time so basically uh, you know you had to uh, you you, uh, uh, you had to pay more dollars in order to get the same amount of rupees okay so basically rupee was overvalued so uh, so 60% conversion at market rate and 40% conversion at official rate so because official rate was that rupee was overvalued so people could not get all their dollars back for the given rupee okay so this this was a 60 40 pattern and because because of this restriction that 40 percent conversion will be done at official rate even though the rupee is overvalued okay it led to restrictions in uh, you know conversion of rupees but although we had a partial account convertibility 40 60 enough reforms are made within this general policy okay enough reforms have take play have taken place so what are the different reforms we have taken so first of all uh, rbi has uh, said that in the automatic method okay uh, you know without rbi approval uh, indian companies can convert up to 500 million dollars in international enterprises so basically they can start business in the foreign of this much capital okay through the automatic route then if debt exceeds 500 million for example in the external commercial borrowing if the debt amount exceeds 500 million indian companies are authorized to prepay their external commercial uh, borrowings via automated route so they don't need to take special rbi uh, permission through automated route they can prepay okay before the maturity they can pay their amount okay if it exceeds 500 million so that is also allowed then individuals can invest up to 2.5 lakh dollars okay 2.5 lakh dollars per year in foreign assets so they can invest up to 2.5 lakh in american securities or london securities japanese security any any security in foreign assets okay so basically this was part of the liberal uh, liberalized remittance scheme of 2004 so liberalized remittance scheme of 2004 was what it said that individuals indian individuals can freely remit up to 2.5 lakh dollars per year for any permissible current or capital account transactions or combination of both so up to 2.5 lakh dollars a person can convert freely okay it can a person can convert freely for anything it can be for current account or for capital account okay so it can be for purchasing shares or securities capital account it can be for current account basically they can import something they can purchase something right they can send gifts and donation to anybody that also uh, becomes part of uh, current account so it can be done or combination of both can also be done up to 2.5 lakh rupees so this was the liberalized remittance scheme okay except so this permissible current account transactions means what okay uh, uh, for example for example private trips okay you can go on uh, trips to us or london or like any, any country basically you can uh, you can spend up to 2.5 lakh except nepal and bhutan okay so nepal and bhutan are, are exceptions then you can give gifts and donations then going abroad for study or employment maintenance of close relatives living abroad then business travels attending conferences medical treatment etc so there is a list of activities permissible activities in the current account which uh, uh, you know which get covered under the lrs liberalized remittance scheme of 2004 then introduction of fully accessible route we have already discussed this in uh, lesson number 12 why this is for nris basically so nris can invest in specified securities okay it can invest in specified uh, securities uh liberally okay without any restriction they can invest into this so that is a, f a fully uh, accessible route far and also uh, you know fdi policy uh, has been changing over the years so now the government allows fdi to invest in most sectors through automatic routes okay almost 90 percent of sectors government has allowed through the automatic routes so this is how you know we are slowly slowly liberalizing our capital account now in the description section friends i have uh, given a link of uh, you know a recent speech of 2020 of our rbi governor shri shaktikan das okay and in that uh, you know he is talking about the development of capital account convertibility in our country over the years and uh, you know he has explained it like very nicely you will understand it it is not compulsory but if you are interested you can read it i have i have mentioned it in the link uh, in the description section you can download it you can read it it will take like 10 15 minutes to read okay so if you are interested you can do that uh, so this was about the currency convertibility we have studied about capital and current account convertibility so you just need to keep in mind what is the difference between them uh, why capital account convertibility is not suitable in our country as of now and what different steps we are taking uh, you know to reach that destination basically of having a 
complete uh, capital account convertibility okay so uh, uh, we will continue uh, international economics in next video thank you